maybe you don't know this, but you can say something different than what you usually say and actually tell the truth that you don't want to talk about it in that moment, that you're uncomfortable in that moment, but that you do care about what the other person has to say, or at the very least, that you do care about the other person. I don't like to argue, so I say nothing and fume for days. How do I set boundaries without sounding like a jerk? I hate the idea that I might accidentally offend somebody, so sometimes I'd just rather say nothing at all. Welcome to the Language Alchemy Podcast, and thank you for joining me today. This is your host, Alejandra Siroca, a transformative communication teacher and coach devoted to helping you have more peace and more harmony in all your relationships. Do you ever say to yourself, I don't want to talk about it, or something to that effect? If so, well, um, we need to talk. (laughs) In this episode, I want to address the impact that I don't want to talk about it may be having in your life and what you can do about it. In fact, many of us do that. What is that? We say things like, I don't want to talk about it. And even if you don't literally say something like that, you may be expressing it in a different way, such as, now is not the right time. Or maybe you get distracted, you make a joke, you change the subject, or you leave the room. I remember working with a lovely couple. They came to me for communication coaching at a time when we were still meeting in person at my office in San Francisco. And in the beginning, something started to happen. At some point during the coaching session, One of the partners in this couple would excuse himself because he would have a sudden urge to go to the restroom. So we would interrupt the session. And when he would come back, he would say something like, I've been thinking about and change the subject. The same thing happened a couple of times. So I asked him if he had any health issues that prevented him from staying in the room during the 90 minutes of that whole session. And he said, oh, no, I'm very healthy. I double-checked. Is your bladder okay? Your kidneys okay? Are you exercising too much? Getting really thirsty? Drinking too much water? He said, oh, no, everything is okay. So to make sure they could both be present during the next coaching session before we started, I asked if either of them needed to use the restroom. And I received a I'm good, thanks. And he specifically said, I just used the restroom on my way here. But I am sure you can guess what happened. At some point during the session, he excused himself and left the room to go to the restroom. So when he came back, I asked him if he knew what was happening to him every time he would excuse himself and leave the room. He said he had no idea. So I shared that it was when his partner was talking about her big feelings. That's when he would interrupt by needing to go to the restroom. This was a huge revelation to both of them. They had come to me to learn how to communicate more openly because they were experiencing disconnection and lack of communication. And there it was right in front of us. Every time she was trying to connect and share and be heard, he would take space and leave and disconnect. So if you are the person doing this, if you are the one saying, I don't want to talk about it, or now is not the right time, or changing the subject, getting distracted, making a joke, or like my client, leaving the room, then you need to know what you're doing. And what you are doing is avoiding or running away from something that may be really important. Something that you are uncomfortable with. And you need to become aware of what's happening when you're doing this and the impact of this communication habit. Yes, this is a communication habit that most likely is happening when you're not feeling comfortable with what you are hearing. And if you keep engaging in this habit 
and disengaging from the other person when you feel uncomfortable, then how will you learn anything different? How will you learn to connect to the other? Now, one of the many great things about you listening to this podcast right now is that you are an adult. You are an adult who can learn and who can choose to learn different ways of responding instead of reacting again and again in a habitual way. Because when you are reacting in a habitual way, you are not choosing. You are acting automatically. And let me ask you this. How do you feel when others act automatically? Maybe you feel lonely, like you don't matter, or like you're not enough because the other person is not paying attention to you. They're just on autopilot. Maybe you feel abandoned because even though the other person is there in the flesh, they're not really present with you. And guess what? This is the impact of phrases like, I don't want to talk about it, or this is not the right time. This is the impact of communication like making a joke, changing the subject, or leaving the room when the other is saying something important, something that may be uncomfortable to you. When you are communicating in autopilot with another person, they may feel lonely or sad. They may start thinking that they don't matter, that they're small that you don't care about them, or they may experience that you are abandoning them. Yes, this is how the other person might feel when you say these phrases in a habitual way. Remember that couple I told you about? Well, the woman who was sharing her big feelings and whose partner was leaving the room, right? When this happened, when her partner left the room, she felt abandoned, sad, lonely, because he would just leave her talking. She thought her partner didn't really love her or else he would stay and be able to listen to her. The truth is that her partner did love her. He just needed to learn to stay in the room and listen with openness, generosity, and capacity. So when you communicate either with your words or your body language that you don't want to talk about it, just know that this is the impact you are having. You are creating disconnection. And if you tend to have this particular kind of habit, I'm going to tell you one thing you can do about it. But before I do that, I want you to know that I know you don't want to create disconnection or illicit feelings of loneliness in others, especially in those you care about the most. I know you want the most important people in your life to feel that they are important, to feel connected with you, even in the moments when you feel uncomfortable or maxed out or when you don't have more space in you. What I'm going to teach you is not about giving space to the other and sacrifice yourself. No, I am going to teach you how to give space to both of you, you and the other person. And this happens when you learn to choose and maintain true connection with your partner or friend or someone you care about during those uncomfortable moments. If what you're hearing resonates with you, I want to invite you to a six-week course I'm teaching called Choosing True Connection, learning to listen without losing your cool, taking it personally, or giving up who you are. In this course, I'm going to teach you several things you can choose to do instead of engaging in the I don't want to talk about it habit. For more information and to sign up, you can go to languagealchemy.com forward slash enroll. Now, as I said before, I want to tell you one thing you can do right now that's different from what you do. One thing that I fully trust you can do. And what I'm going to teach you is something that I have done many times for years, like this time when my mother-in-law was visiting. This was at the beginning of our marriage. It was early in the morning and I was rushing to catch a train and get to court because at that time I was working as a court interpreter. And 
Since Matthew's mom is from the East Coast, she would get up really early. So by the time I was in the kitchen running around trying to get breakfast and pack my lunch, she was already pretty awake. On this particular day, I was about to miss the train, and she was telling me something I didn't have the space for. It wasn't that I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it in that moment because it was an inconvenient moment. So I said to her something that you can say when someone is saying something to you that you don't have the space for, that you don't want to talk about in that moment. I said, I don't have the wherewithal to talk about it in this moment. I want to hear you. You matter to me. Can we talk about it when I come back instead? You know her response? Her face was beaming. I still remember she said to me, Wow, honey, what a skillful way to say not right now. And then she wished me a good day at work and off I went. And when I came back home, she told me her story. So see, maybe you don't know this, but you can say something different than what you usually say and actually tell the truth that you don't want to talk about it in that moment, that you're uncomfortable in that moment, but that you do care about what the other person has to say, or at the very least, that you do care about the other person. And in that case, offer an alternative time. And then, of course, hold yourself accountable to bringing the subject up at that time, the time you proposed. To recap, in this episode, I shared with you what happens to you when you engage in the habit of communicating, I don't want to talk about it. Or in other words, what happens when you avoid having a conversation about something that might be very important. I also talked about what happens to the recipient of that communication, and I taught you one thing you can do about it and say in order to create true connection. I know you can do this because you are a capable adult. And I also know that even capable adults like you need a bit more guidance sometimes. So if you feel like you could benefit from learning how to create more connection with your communication in a supportive environment, then go check out the six-week online course I'm starting soon. The course called Choosing True Connection, Learning to Listen Without Losing Your Cool, Taking It Personally, or Giving Up Who You Truly Are. Really, go to languagealchemy.com forward slash enroll. And in the meantime, as you interact with others this week, especially with the important people in your life, be aware of your capacity to choose true connection instead of choosing or actually engaging in your habitual patterns. Thank you so much for listening. And a special thanks to my clients Ellen and Ted for learning to move away from the habits that created disconnection in their marriage and choose to connect with one another lovingly. Next week, I'm going to talk about whether you do give up who you truly are when you want to express yourself authentically. So stay tuned. And until then, as we say in Argentina, ciao, ciao. Original music by Gary Lapo. You can find all links in the show notes at languagealchemy.com. Mm-hmm.